Hello, this is a robot project, but it's sponsored by LG's Xboom Go Bluetooth speakers. So I get asked to review a lot of Bluetooth speakers in this channel, but normally I don't do any of them. But these are pretty good, and it's a good brand because it's LG. These speakers all support Meridian technology, which gives us complete control over the audio signal, so it sounds exactly how it's supposed to. And Meridian technology is used in the latest Land Rovers and Jaguars. So these are Bluetooth speakers, but they have high fidelity sound quality, and in fact they support 24-bit, which is higher quality than a CD. The larger speakers, the PK5 and the PK7, both have lights in to light up your party and those lights react to the music as it's playing. The PK7 has dual tweeters and all of these speakers have dual action bass. And the PK3. If you've got more than one of these speakers, you can use the dual play feature to pair them together and that means you can get stereo sound out of each of the speakers. They've also all got this voice control button which allows you to link them to your smartphone for voice control, be it Siri or an Android voice controlled app. All of these speakers are splash proof and the PK3 apparently can be completely submerged. These have pretty good battery life as well, so 12 hours, 18 hours and 22 hours on the PK7, which is pretty good for a Bluetooth speaker. So this range of speakers has received a four star review from both Tech Radar and Trusted Reviews. So these look a bit like a robot head, don't they, with two eyes in them? So LG have asked me, can I make a robot with one of these as his head? So I'm going to use the PK7, the big one, to make a two wheel balancing robot. And that's going to look something like this. We're going to use the PK7 for its head, that's about a foot long, so the whole thing is about three feet tall. It's got quite big wheels, it's got lots of body panels, it's going to have an aluminium and 3D printed frame inside, two motors with two belt driven wheels, and obviously it's going to balance on those two wheels using an inertial measurement unit and some code running on a Teensy 3.6. So here's my aluminium frame, all aluminium plates and extrusion and we've used T-nuts and bolts to attach everything so that's extremely rigid indeed. Down the bottom we've got a hole there to allow an axle through so we need to 3D print the part that's going to grab the axle and we've also got these plates which are going to hold the motors and those are going to go in sliders that tension up and down and that's going to adjust the belt tension or rather pull it tight to the wheel. So we've printed these blocks that fit in just here and those have got a clamp we can put a bolt through and that's going to hold an axle which is a steel 18 millimeter axle that goes all the way through those holes. Then we have a motor assembly which is one of these turning G motors which is 149 kV the 6374 SK3 range and we've got that on an aluminium plate with a pulley and we've got a 3D printed spacer and we've got the shaft sticking out the back to put the encoder on and that plate fits into these runners which have got grooves on the inside so that that plate can slide up and down and we can go and tension the motor distance between that and the wheel. So we've got those blocks bolted in at the bottom, we've got our motors fitted and those plates of course slide up and down to tension the belt tension and we've got our two motors and we've got encoders on the back which are the 8192 CPR encoders which you get from O-Drive Robotics which is handy because I'm going to be using an O-Drive Robotics motor driver to drive the motors. So that is feeling incredibly rigid and incredibly substantial, there's quite a lot of mass to it now those motors and all the plates are in but we really need some wheels so that we can get the main mechanical mechanical assembly finished. So 
So there is one wheel hub with half a tyre printed and the tyre is Ninja Flex, so it's really flexible. And the hub is printed with a 1.2mm nozzle on the Lulzbot Moore Struder. I had to change filament halfway through because it's such a big print, which is why the middle's red, but that's incredibly tough. So just one more hub to print and three more of those tyres. So after many hours of printing, we've now got two wheels with the four tyres on. So we've got the bearings encapsulated in the top there, and we've also got a T5 pulley, which is a separate piece printed with a smaller extruder slotted on so that we can drive the wheel with the motor. So now we just need to fit that axle, get the wheels on, and then we can go and fit some pulleys and get those tensioned up. So my wheels are fitted there and obviously they're belt driven onto the motors but what we need to do is keep this belt tight so we need to pull these two plates together and we're going to do that with these pair of blocks. Now one has got a captive nut in the bottom which fits in a little place and that means I can tighten these together and that pulls them together and those are called bolt on the two plates. So those tensioners are fitted, there's a nut above and below, don't know if you can just see that, that allows me to pull that studding up and down and of course that's in the captive nut at the bottom so it pulls those two plates together and tensions up the belt. And the belts I'm using there have got steel tensioning cords and they're 85 belts which are the slightly heavier duty version of the T5. So I think that on the whole that should have less backlash than we get in a gearbox. So that's everything so far. We've got the LG X Boom P7 speaker which is actually going to sit a bit higher than that on its neck. So it comes to nearly three feet tall and obviously we've got the arms and all the body panels to do. But first of all I want to put some electronics in and see if we can get some rudimentary control over those wheels. So here's my prototype electronics setup. The motor driver is the O-Drive 3.5 and that will drive two motors. We've only got one connected for now. We've also got one encoder connected to that motor assembly we just built. At the core I've got a Teensy 3.6 and we've got an MPU 6050 inertial measurement unit and that's what's going to make the robot balance. We've also got two of these which are the NRF 24 L01 and one of those is connected to this Mega which is basically going to be the remote control. So we're going to receive data from the remote control to drive around and move the arms and that sort of thing but the main balancing is going to be dealt with by the Teensy which is a very fast processor at 180 megahertz and it's 32 bits. So for now I'm just connected to one wheel of the motor and I've just tied the angle of the inertial measurement unit to control the motor speed so if I tip it we'll see the motor moves in either direction. Obviously we need a PID controller and some tuning to actually make it balance which is the fun challenge of balancing robots but for now I can control that motor and that seems to run perfectly well. There's several really important things to consider when building a balancing robot. One of those is that the motors can be positioned and velocity controlled really accurately and that's what the O-Drive is very good at with that 8192 CPR encoder. The other one of course is having a good range of speed and a lot of torque. So I don't think we're going to have any problems here. That seems to be uh, pretty good and of course we've got that extra mass on top as well which is going to stop that wheel just spinning like it did there so I think there's no problem with the power of the motors I think we're limited to about 10 or 20 amps and we could go up to 40 and we could also go up to 48 volts so we could quadruple the power there I'm going to start with 24 because I think that's going to be fine to make it balance and it's not really a racing machine. So anyone familiar with my channel will have seen this a number of times before. I'm using the I2C DevLiv from Jeff Roberg, which you can get on GitHub for the MPU6050 with Arduino examples. So very similar to OpenDog episode 20, which I did quite recently, we've got an interrupt service routine and we've got an interrupt attached to pin zero. And that is the MPU6050 saying its data is ready and that IMU will combine its accelerometer and gyro data for you and just give you the numbers basically in degrees and we only need to read one axis here. So that interrupt service routine goes to another tab and all that's doing is setting a flag here. So that's just saying the IMU data ready flag is set to one. Then further down my main loop we say if that IMU data ready flag is set to one then use the read angles function and that goes back to the same tab where we do all the MPU 6050 stuff out of the example code to go and get those angles and that means that basically it only ever reads the angles at this specific place in the loop regardless of when the interrupt is triggered and that could be at any time in the code. So for now we're just going and typing that out to a serial terminal and we're setting the motor velocities. Now I did quite a lot of stuff in OpenDog episode 20 about how long the loop takes and at the moment I do have the ability to throttle it down but at the moment I'm throttling it down to 0 milliseconds. So we can actually see how long the loop takes to read that data, read the remote data and write to the O-Drive. If we have a look in a serial monitor we can see that in fact that's um, under 1 millisecond essentially. These bits of data are from the remote and the end ones here, this is the angle of one of the IMU axis and this is the data going out to the O-Drive. So if I go and tip that board we should see the number getting bigger and we should be able to hear the O-Drive in the background 
ramping that axis all the way up and we've still only got one millisecond of course we're only doing two O drive writes to the two axis of the O drive although I have clocked my O drive up to half a megabit but I don't think the results would be much slower if we use the default 115 killer board. So I've put my electronics on this board. This is a piece of perma proto board, which is like a breadboard, but it's actually got solder connections. So you can transfer your breadboard design onto it really easily. So we've got the TNC, the MPU 6050 that's soldered down tight so it never shifts. And we've got the uh, little remote chip there on a socket and a cable for the serial line, which goes off to the O drive. That one, I've shortened all the cables and we've also got those on the 3D printed bases to fit into the robot. So I've made this 3D printed piece of plastic that sits in the bottom and that's going to hold the battery. So that should slot in just in here. Yep, fits perfectly and of course the battery goes in there. So we've got the Teensy fitted right in the top there and we've got the O-Drive in the bottom along with the battery so the leads are nice and short to the motors and the encoders. And obviously we've still got that IMU mapped to the both motor speeds now. So no proper tuning yet. But um, yeah, that's looking pretty good. Yep, so that does almost balance actually. It needs a proper controller, but um, pretty hopeful that those motors are gonna be fast enough and talky enough. Don't think there's gonna be any problems there. So yeah, there we go, won't let it run off the table. But that's, uh, yeah, almost there, excellent. Right, we've got the Xboom P7 speaker fitted as the head. We've got a 3D printed neck there, and the panels are gonna fit around that. And we've got some little 3D prints that are fitted in the back and the front, and those are bolted onto the 2020 extrusion. Around the back, I've got these three clamps, which are attached to the neck with screws, and we've got some straps that go around the bar of the speaker. We've also got some sticky pads underneath to hold the head on. So there was gonna be loads of trial and error footage of getting this to balance, but it's come up pretty uh, quickly in the end. So obviously just with the IMU mapped proportionally to the motor speeds, it almost balanced so I put a PID controller in and um, it's been really easy to tune up so um, it's actually pretty stable already that's just balancing on two wheels so pretty happy with that and what we've got is a PID controller with a set point which is actually a little potentiometer in here so I can get it to balance perfectly because obviously the speaker isn't perfectly in the middle and it isn't perfectly balanced back to front we've got the input which is coming from the inertial measurement unit so it's that angle and then basically we've got an output which is just driving the wheels. Eventually we'll be able to steer it by making one go faster and we'll be able to make it radio controlled. But for now it just balances, trying to keep exactly upright with that set point that's perfectly balanced. And um, that seems to be working pretty well, so I'm pretty happy with that. And for anyone interested in my P, I and D values, what I typically find for balancing robots is that you want an I value that's extremely high, normally 10 times that of P. And that's because I helps the robot accelerate towards its target more so that it can balance and catch itself really quickly. You need, then need to dampen that down with a D value, which you can basically experiment with. And these probably could go a bit higher still to try and get rid of some of those oscillations and make it a bit more reactive when you push it instead of driving for a long time, although there is quite a lot of mass on the robot. And you'll notice these values are really, really high, and that's because the O-Drive encoders are 8,192 counts per revolution, so to get enough counts per second or per minute to get the velocity we need, we need quite a lot of amplification on our PID controller. But that's the end of part one. Don't forget to come back in part two where we're going to put his arms on, and those are going to be motorised and also make a controller so that we can drive it all around, and then see what we can do with it. Thanks again to LG for sponsoring this video with their LG X-Boom Go speakers. Alright, that's all for now.